Welcome in to the PFF Two Minute Drill. Austin Gale here with my guys Kevin Cole and Sam Monson. Today we're going to start with Patrick Mahomes' fantasy projections. We recently tweeted this out saying he's going to get around 42, 4,300 yards in 2020. I know, Kev, you play a huge part in putting the fantasy projections together. And before you answer, got to mention PFF promo code FANTASY40 saves you 40% off any PFF subscription right now through July 20th. Firmly recommend that. Back to you, Kev. Mahomes, where are you at with his projections? You over that number, under that number? What are, what's your thoughts? I mean, I can understand why a lot of people think it's going to go over that number. Uh, when you dig into a bit further, the real reason here is we're projecting him for slightly less volume than what he's seen in the past. If that defense can hold up, if they turn a little bit more towards the run game, a lot of things can end up happening, and those could end up being big leads, and maybe they'll sit on him a little bit more than they have in the past. So I think I'm comfortable with the projection where it is. Uh, Efficiency-wise, we have him about where he was last year. The question is whether everyone thinks he's going to jump back to that rookie year performance. And sometimes we don't know that. Sometimes it's a you know Dan Marino second year situation where you have that that outlier year. You still have an outstanding years going forward, but you don't necessarily jump back up to that once in a lifetime type of season. So I'm comfortable where they are. And as incredible as Mahomes is, you have to think that the Chiefs aren't comfortable leaning on him quite as much as they have over the first couple of years. Hence, drafting a guy like Clyde Edwards Hilaire in the first round, trying to get that defense better. I think they'd probably like if his volume decreased a little bit. That being said, he threw for over 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns last year, and he missed basically three games. He did three games in the playoffs, he threw for 900 yards and 10 touchdowns. So I think you would have to err on the side of over if you were using our projections as an over underline. Yeah, I mean, I think you definitely want to go over there too when you're looking at betting markets, seeing the number at 4,700 at minus 115. I think people are expecting a ton of passing yards from Patrick Mahomes and rightfully so. I think great stats were right in the same boat. I think you're still going to see a lot of volume from Patrick Mahomes. Yes, they added Clyde Edwards to Lair, but he's also a very good pass catching back. The skill players only get better in Kansas City. Sammy Watkins, Nicole Hardman in year two. Obviously Tyree Kill, you add CEH from LSU. I think this offense gets so much better to that. He's gonna just keep putting up a ton of yards. Now the, the biggest player news we got over the last few days is uh, David Njoku is now asking for a trade. We're not to the NBA now in the NFL now, but players have been successful you know, forcing their way out of town or at least being able to, to renegotiate. So, Sam, to you, what do you think about Njoku leaving? Where is the best place he can go for his career going forward? The best place he could go is to stay the hell in Cleveland. I don't know what he's thinking trying to get out of that situation. The Browns are going to be running this two tight end offense with Kevin Stefanski coming on board. Last season, the Minnesota Vikings ran with two tight ends on 46.4% of their snaps. That's the second most in the NFL behind only the Eagles, who have you know legitimately two number one tight ends. They had two different tight ends have 46 targets last year. That is a monster upgrade over anything the Browns were doing. So Njoku should stay there. That's where he's gonna get the most number of passes thrown his way. And that's where he's gonna be set up to succeed the best. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Sam. I think he should stay put in Cleveland, but if he had to leave, if you had to kick him out of the dog pound, I think the New England Patriots make the most sense. Cam Newton now, obviously, in Foxborough. I think you obviously saw the success he had with Greg Olson at tight end. I think Njoku would instantly start in New England. That's a big part of it as well. Obviously, Matt Lacoste, the veterans, the starter there. They added two rookies in the third round, Dalton Keene and Devin Asiasi out of UCLA. But even adding those guys, Njoku, as young as he is, as talented as he is, you have to expect that he starts in New England. And if that's what he wants, if he wants a starting job where he's the premier tight end in an offense, not the number two tight end in a two tight end offense led by Kevin Stefanski, I think New England is his best landing spot. I mean, I understand why he might want to leave after the signing, uh, making Austin Hooper the highest paid tight end in the league. But, you know, this is a team that has shown faith in him. They picked up his fifth year option. Andrew Barry is now there, um, is the GM. He was there when he was drafted. Uh, by the team in the first round that so that he could still be around he could still continue to grow for the next couple of years so i'm going to go with sam here and just think he should stay in cleveland and from cleveland's perspective i just don't know what you're going to get other than a late round pick for him right now so it really makes no sense for them to get rid of him and then have to rely on maybe the rookie that they took last year or another player they're going to need tight end depth and he's going to fill that so i don't see this really coming together with any sort of trade and the Vikings last year a dead even split in terms of targets from Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. They're not necessarily going to throw all the passes to Hooper and Njoku just gets whatever's left on board. He should have a big role still. 
All right, the last thing we want to focus on, PFF's offensive line rankings up on the website. What was the most surprising team and position? I'm sticking with the Browns here. Browns, I think it's six or seven. I, I think it was six. Coming up all the way from 23rd of previous year to sixth on PFF's latest offensive line rankings, obviously adding Jedrick Wills Jr., Conklin, Wyatt Teller. I mean, they have added some pieces this offseason. However, I don't know if those two pieces specifically on the bookend. One, I love Jedrick Wills. Still a very young player, and we've seen time and time again that rookie offensive line grades, it's hard to have elite top-end starter production as a rookie at that position. And Conklin, though he's been good, a bit inconsistent. I, I don't know if they're that much better than they were a year ago, though I do think they are significantly improved. You know what? I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals being surprising, but in the other direction. They were a team we had right outside of the top 10 in offensive lines last season after being the worst offensive line two years ago. And now we have them dropping back down to 21st. I mean, I can see some regression here, but we're talking about the second year uh, for a new scheme, new quarterback, uh, that continuity that they're going to have there with the offensive line. Plus, they got who we felt to be a very good value pick of Josh Jones in the third round and then Marcus Gilbert coming back. So I feel like they have some depth there that they didn't have before. And continuity on the offensive line is huge. So they have that going for them also this year. The New England Patriots ranking at number seven is going to blow the minds of Patriots fans that suffered through that offensive line last year. But I think it's a great example of how offensive lines don't exist in a vacuum. They are subject to the same external forces and pressures of any other position. And really everything stemmed in New England from the lack of receivers getting open. That caused Brady to hold the ball longer than he has any time in the last 10 years. It made the offensive line look worse across the board. Now, you can make the argument that none of that has really changed. And with Cam Newton coming on board, maybe they're, they're set to look even worse in 2020. But I think from a personnel standpoint, from a who's there on the offensive line, this is a really good unit. And only really Isaiah Wynn at left tackle is any kind of question mark. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.